Well, welcome back to Tech Tips, Fixes, and More. Today we have a controller from a Roland TD27 electronic drum set. this fix today is going to be a fairly straightforward one because uh, it is not a fault that was reported as much as it's a piece of a bit of damage that happened to this this uh, drum set actually belongs to our church and uh, we have been uh, storing it uh, during the week uh, under a stage and it is pushed in underneath there and we don't have a, a road case for it or anything and so it has uh, been damaged by pushing the thing in underneath the stage and uh, apparently some of the USB connectors were bent over and damaged the uh, connectors in this unit so I'm hoping that um, this will be a matter of taking it apart and uh, checking it over and replacing some uh, circuit board USB jacks. Now I fortunately have a kit that I bought from Amazon not all that long ago with a whole selection of different uh, connectors like this and so I'm hoping that the ones that I have are going to be uh, usable in this particular application but I won't know until I get it opened up. So stick with me here and uh, we'll open this up and take a look see what we can do. So here it is, the rear edge of the unit, and it has a number of quarter inch jacks. It has uh, some, I think these are called DIN connectors, and it has three USB uh, connectors which are labeled digital trigger in, and they're labeled one, two, and three. And when I got it, this one was covered with a piece of tape with an X on it, and I received a text saying that this one was not working at all. This one was intermittent. Um, it was working, but it's kind of loose. I'm not sure if it was intermittent or not. And this one was fine. And when we look closely at them, you can actually see that um, this one is, is bent out of shape. And this one seems to be tilted a little bit. And this one looks fine. So, uh, no doubt, when we get in here, we're going to see this one has got um, a, some damage where it's connected to the board. I'm going to guess that that's a surface mount connector and uh, it's probably lifted so we have to figure out how to get it apart and we'll know how to fix it when that time comes. There's a connector connecting these two boards together, but I think it's just a pop-in connector. There we go. Right there. So that came apart pretty easy. Those connectors we're going to be looking at are on the bottom side of this board. So a little bit more taking apart to get at it. I'm just going to inspect the bottom here and just see if there's any broken solder blank joints. So these are the 
connectors and when I look at them through my magnifier there's nothing obvious just yet so I guess it's also possible that if these uh, jacks were just distorted maybe the contacts were not making uh, when it was plugged in so it, it, it's possible it isn't a soldering situation but um, I'll have to lift that board to get a closer look at the other side and then we'll find out if my little kit contains what I actually need if I've got the right kind of connector it doesn't look like this is um, surface mount so that's a little different than I had expected but so here's the one that's got the problem again I don't see I don't see any obvious broken tracks or broken solder joints so maybe with this connector just being a bit distorted it was not making contact inside yeah I can see that the plastic piece that holds the contacts is loose see with this one the plastic doesn't move but with this one that had the problem you can see it's moving so it's probably broken back in there and it's hard to see but I think one of the contacts is actually not even um, attached to that plastic anymore so I think if I've got the right one I will just replace that and we'll see. I'll probably replace the second one because it's a little, well, it's, it's moving too. Whereas this one hardly moves at all. Okay, so um, here's this little kit that I bought from Amazon. And it has a bunch of different kinds of uh, USB-A connectors. In it, some of them are most of them are um, female um, connectors, uh, board mounted. But there's a couple of uh, the other type, and and there's a few uh, USB micro connectors as well in here. No USB C came in this kit. So, uh, and I found that the uh, quality of these has been fairly good. I've used them in a number of different little projects. So what we're looking for is a PC, PC mount one with the pins uh, on a 90 degree angle and it's a receptacle. So let's see what we can find here. Okay so I found what I needed. But maybe before I go on, I should just make a couple of comments about USB connectors. Um, many of you will be familiar with this already, and there's good information online about different kinds of USB. But um, these are USB-A connectors, and this is a receptacle. They're both receptacles. Now, USB, the original version, had four connections, which were... Uh, data plus, data minus, ground, and 5 volts. And I won't go into which is which here, but you'll notice on this connector there are three pins that go through the PC board. So this is the correct one for what we want to put in there. Uh, if you see a blue connector, that's a USB 3A connector. And you'll notice here that this has actually got um, nine pins on it, two, two rows of pins. And so this isn't what we have in this case. We're not 
we don't need the um, USB 3. USB 3 is typically blue and so they uh, stand out and there's a higher speed one yet than that, I believe it's red. Uh, so we can set this aside and uh, I found two of the USB A original connectors and they I believe they're direct replacement so I'm going to solder them in. Desoldering with this soldering braid uh, is good on small connections like this, uh, but it's tricky. You don't want to um, apply so much heat that you lift a pad. Um, it actually helps. You can maybe see that I'm kind of wiggling the tip a little bit because that usually helps to uh, loosen up the surface tension of the solder which um, then allows the braid to uh, by capillary action uh, pull the solder out of the joint but if you go too far with that you can again damage the pads so you have to be very careful with that just use a minimal amount of um, movement on it. It's uh, soldering is very much a uh, skill that's acquired through practice and um, I used to be a pretty good solderer because I worked in a manufacturing plant and did uh, testing and repair but with um, lack of practice it's easy to lose your skills and so I wouldn't claim that my soldering skills are all that they were at one time. You'll notice that my soldering iron is uh, it's kind of bent on the end and that was probably from putting a little too pressure. This is a very fine tip I'm using here and it really isn't big enough for um, desoldering these larger pads. I may have to change the tip again. Okay, so I've desoldered the connectors. I believe I've got all the solder out of the holes and I've loosened up the uh, pins in those holes. Then I washed them uh, with some uh, flux cleaner and uh, I'm going to take out the connectors. This connector isn't too bad, but it's a little bent up. Now this one, let's see if we can get it out. Sometimes you have to take a small pair of pliers or a set of side cutters and uh, just kind of loosen up the pins after you've got the solder out of the holes and uh, then just kind of work them free. If you try to do that when they aren't free you can pull out the through holes in the connector or in the PC board so uh, that is a bad thing. 
So with this one you can see that it's even bent up a little more and it's really not um, in very good shape. As I was saying before, the uh, plastic piece inside there is loose in this one. So we're going to replace those. These ones I had in my kit are exact replacements. the pins have all come through properly. I'm going to make sure it's down good and tight. I'll do the other one. To keep them in place while you solder, sometimes it's necessary to just bend these pins out just a little bit, just so they are a little tighter in the holes. Although it's probably not really necessary, I think I'm going to add a little bit of flux. Probably the holes and pads are not a problem as far as uh, oxidization, but the pins on the connector we're putting in might be a little oxidized. And so the flux will help with that. I've got a different tip in my solder soldering iron now, and uh, I think this one's a little better sized and shaped for what we're doing right now. Just going to push up on the connector while the solder is still molten, just to make sure it's seated properly. And I'll solder the pins, the smaller pins, afterwards. Those through holes are sucking down a fair amount of solder, which is probably good. We'll inspect it on the other side later. But before we go there, I'll clean this up a little bit. Maybe we'll see that I had a little solder splash right here that you couldn't really see it until after I washed it with uh, flux cleaner. But I think the rest of these are looking pretty good. So let's just take a look on the other side.
can't see the pins very well from this side. But you can see good enough to tell that if there's no big solder gobs or anything like that on there. Okay. So I think the next thing to do is to put this back together uh, to the point where we can do some testing on it to just make sure everything is working. They got this working the last time that uh, they used it by plugging into two and three and not using one, which was the one that was, wasn't working. But I'm okay, so I've uh, got the drums out here in my garage and uh, now I just need to check to make sure that that module is actually working. And I downloaded some instructions online uh, just to figure out how this works. Now, those USB ports, there's three of them, and they are uh, used for special uh, sensors. Uh, one of them is a snare, another one's a crash cymbal, and I think the hi-hat. And uh, if you have the right type of sensor, you can then plug them into those USB ports, which... Uh, provide additional information. They're not triggered quite the same. There's a, there's an additional uh, capability to them and I'm not thoroughly uh, familiar with what they are exactly. But according to the instructions, when you plug in one of those sensors, um, it'll sense that they're there and you select which kind of a sensor it is on the uh, display. So uh, I don't have the, the actual snare drum, which would be one of the ones we use, but I do have a crash cymbal that is used with it, and I think I may be able to test this using the crash cymbal for each one of those inputs. Okay, I've zoomed in on the uh, front panel, and I've got this cymbal plugged into the uh, digital trigger in 3, and when I hit the symbol, you can see that there's an indicator indicating that there is signal coming in. And when I unplug it, plug it into digital 2, I also get a signal. When I plug it into 1, I also get a signal. I guess I should also try it by disconnecting it completely. Yeah, I disconnected it completely and I got no signal indicated. So that may be as good a test as I can do without having the actual snare here. So I think that pretty much wraps up this particular little fix. It should be working now. We'll have to uh, test it once we've got the snare, but I th believe it's going to work better. So thanks for joining us on this one. Uh, thanks for any comments that you might make, and uh, I'd encourage you to uh, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.